All right. Um, welcome back, everyone. It's Instructor Phil here. What I'm going to do really quick is I'm going to do a little demo for you because there's one thing I wanted to talk about, something that I noticed when you guys are going to draw. Um, and what that is, is there's something, some of you guys are drawing and you start to draw a fish and you might do this. So I'm going to give you an example here. Um, you might take your fish and some of you are coming into your drawing and you're sort of doing this. You're sketching the basics of the fish, but then you're going right into this and then you're going into detail from there. That's sort of, you can you guys see that okay online up there? Blue lines. It's a little hard. Let me switch. You turn off the light a little bit. Yeah, or just a teeny bit. Yeah, the one in front of it there, that's a little bit better. Okay, that's better. So I noticed some of you in class, you're going into this right now, which is correct, but wrong. And let me explain why. It's still a, it's still a very round shape. What you really need to do is you need to get this in here. You need to understand that there is an angle right here on the fish, right? And the fish actually has an angle plane that goes like this. Then let's say that the gill's here. This actually comes at another angle like this. It's almost like the planimetric head created by John Azaro, which is a head with multiple angles and facades. You need to really see these, these facades. So I'm under sketching this. Then there's an angle here for the fin. And then that fin sort of pops out a little bit like this. Okay. Then after that, we come back in here. There starts to go underneath. And then we have another angle like this down on the bottom, sort of like this. Okay. Then this part of the fish sort of goes this way like that. So the difference in that, what I'm noticing that some of you guys aren't doing is then you're losing this understanding of shape and form and how shape and form is then applying and wrapping around this fish. You see that line there? You guys are missing that line when I'm looking at some of you guys, because what you're doing is you're skipping that. You're going right into rendering with your texture and you're losing that three-dimensional feel of the fish. Not only does that happen there, but you got to remember part of this fish angles up this way. And this particular fish I'm looking at, I don't even know what it is. It's some type of a, uh, looks like a, something I'd see in the tropics. Okay. Cause it's very colorful, but it has a, a fin pattern that comes off this way and right about here, fin comes to meet, tucks back down. And then when this, so real quick now, remember we did the vehicles, we have a center line to the fish. The center line goes across part of the mouth, comes here to the gills, wraps back around, flattens, and then curves back this way, if that makes sense. Okay, because then we have then these angle planes that are going downward like this. Okay, so that's an angle plane. And then as this line here proceeds back, this plane angles downward again. And then this plane is receding further away from me, almost going like this, dot to dot, and then going away like this. You need to get that structure in there in order to really feel the shape of the fish. Okay. Some of you are skipping that. And what I notice is I look at your texture and what you're doing is your texture, I'm gonna do this in red. It's not following that pattern. For example, if I come up here, even if my fish head has a center line and it rounds like this, meaning that I have a center line that's gonna wrap up and over that shape like that. And if I draw through it, it would look something like this, okay? I'm gonna be able to see that line and then it's gonna wrap around, that gill is pronouncing outward, then it's gonna come down, then it's gonna cut in like this. You need to have that three-dimensional feel to your fish or, or remember we're drawing fish, we're drawing bugs, and then we're also drawing uh, 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 sea life like uh, coral in certain rock formations, okay? Those have lots of textures in them. If you, if you bypass this and you're not thinking about these shapes, now this here is just a fin. Fin's just gonna recede back to a high point like this, that's it. And these little curves are just gonna go back and curve. That'll be part of that detail. The other part of my fish, and here's something I noticed people were already sort of messing up on. Let me move this guy over a little bit more. So, 
again, the biggest problem artists tend to screw up on is that they tend to skip construction. Underneath my fish right here, I'm going to have a little teeny side fin and the side fin connects right in here. And that side fin, like when we we're talking about earlier, it's basically exists in a piece of wood, like a wooden plank like this. And I can see the end of that plank and I see it coming out. So remember when we talked about this when drawing vehicles, if I draw through the other side, I find the center line of my fish right here. This insertion on the other side is right about there. Do you see that? which means that triangle of measure, if I go dot, 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 and come up here, and I have that line coming through there, that means that other fin should be coming about there on my fish. So I noticed some of you doing this, and I'm like, come on, we already covered that. You talked about that already. You gotta draw through that shape. Don't be so eager to jump into rendering where you're willing to forsake the shape and the form of the fish. For something that doesn't make any sense okay on this particular fish then in the back here it does have this sort of it has a high position fin that has sort of a round so there's a line that's going to come around the body like this it's going to go out it's going to round here and then off of this round it has a really short little fin span like this and the fin span actually comes out and goes a little bit wider like this and it literally looks like that in terms of its shape. And yes, it does have thickness to it. It has a thickness there. It has a thickness underneath it, like so. Okay. So some of you are skipping this. Let me do a little bit more on my construction here. Because this particular fish also has a wrapping pattern that goes around it. So I noticed these are some of the problems you guys are doing with your construction. Let me get the back. There's a fin in here. It tapers off the back. And it actually gets longer here. So it sort of comes in here and has this wavy like type of feel. And then it rounds in like this. And then all of these lines tend to just go sort of straight back in terms of the fin, the fin detail and they curve a little bit. I'll just get that in there so you can see it. And then these fins that exist in here, I just drew the shape. They're actually coming like this. And then they come to a point and then they come up from the point and then they widen up like this. So then I got to come to the back side. The point is towards me. So that point's going to be coming towards like this. It'll hit about there. Then it comes up and masses underneath like that. You have to get that drawn correctly. Without that in there, you're losing all of that real turn and twist of that fish. Okay. The next thing that's happening on top of that, let's talk about the placement of the eyes. The eyes of my fish are landing about right here. So if I come over here and I draw across to the other side, and I come down in an angle and I draw through my shape right here. That's where the eye is going to be. So my eye on my fish is going to be sitting about right here. The same position that my mother-in-law has her eyes. Okay. In an angle on the side of her body. Okay. So that means this eye here, I'll barely be able to see a bump right there. Do you see that? But I'll see just a teeny bit of that bump there because that represents this curved surface. Oops, hold on. I went to change colors and it didn't work. That curved surface coming out right there. I'm going to have a little bit of that bump right there. I had a student draw the whole eye and do that. And I'm like, nope, not going to see it. I know you want to, but you're not going to see it because if you draw through the shape and the form, you're going to miss that. You notice already how much my fish is already changing in terms of the structure. Spend a couple extra minutes on the shape and the form and get that nailed down then go into the line weight, and then go into the detail. Now, the fish I'm looking at has a really cool pattern. I'm going to try to do this in red. What the pattern is, is a pattern sort of comes down, and it actually meets sort of in the middle, comes up like this, and then that pattern wraps around the body of the fish like this. And then part of that pattern even comes back over. It's going to wrap over that center line. And remember, I'll just to do it in red really quick, um, red come out. There's my, my center line there. There's part of my center line up there and up to there. Okay. Hold on a minute. Why is nothing coming out? There it is. All right. So that pattern is also going to connect and work up. The only one thing that's really weird is my fish has this really weird gill. The gill sort of comes here and bends. And then the gill comes up a little bit to about here. And then this part pops out to there. 
and then curves down like this. And then it rounds back up to the tip of the mouth like that. It has a really weird looking gill shape in there. I might simplify that a little bit. The mouth of my fish basically is right here and the mouth is gonna come up and I could see the upper lip to it like this. There is an upper lip to my fish and it curves down and around that surface. And then along with that, um, you know what? I just realized I'm drawing on a layer that's limited to 30%. Let me increase that a little bit. Actually, what I'm gonna do is this. I've been pressing down super hard on the wrong layer the whole time. So I'm gonna copy that real quick. I'm gonna delete it. Then I'm gonna come back, turn this layer back to where it was to about 30%. And then I'm going to hit deselect. I'm going to paste that back in. I'm going to move that back over like this. And then I can draw on a full color. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down the layer and go start to clean up on top of that. Okay. So I'm going to be able to see that upper lip. And then as well, my fish also has this other lip right in here. Oh, that's weird. Let me go back there. It's the red going on top of the blue. Then the lower lip is sort of puffy-like where it's this shape, but like a bubble with a center line that comes on it like this, comes down. Then the body curves in and comes down. Those are little specifics I need to get. Now, the rest of the pattern I could work on. The last thing my fish has is right about here going along the contour of its body. It has a little rounded side stabilizer fin. I know there's somebody who works at a fish shop who's going to call me out we're not using that proper terminology. And I'm going to tell you, you can call the fish police. Okay, there you go. So you can see now if I continue that center line up, it's going to connect up into here. Now I have a little bit more construction in my fish to make it look right, right? Okay, so let's go into this. That's This is why I wanted you to under sketch in blue is so you get something like that that's working. Now I'm going to come back with some gray and with a black, but I'm doing it digital because it's easier in class to show this on a digital projector than it is. If I do it, it I'm more than fine to do it as a demo, but I don't have a down shooter cam here that you, I'm working on getting one. Frank ordered an extra cam. And I think on this depth right here, I can set it up on an arm. If I can get the, or I might be able to set it up here with a, 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 a Frodo arm, it's a camera arm that holds it and then I could turn that on and then draw on paper and move the Cintiq out of the way. Okay, so what I'm gonna do really quick is I'm gonna sort of thick and thin because I am don't wanna rely on this layer, but I have that structure layer now underneath. Okay, so looking at my fish here, I actually realized I started this fin a little bit early. So um, one other thing I noticed is what I'm gonna do right here. I notice a lot of people that are coming up and showing me your drawing. You're not doing this step here. 70% of you are skipping this step. You're coming up and you were showing me something that looks like this. Hold on, new layer. That's on 30%. You're showing me something that looks like this. Your line is one solid mass weight. You're not doing thick and thin and contour line. I talked about that when I did the other goldfish demo, right? So you have to be able to come in here. I need to be able to see secondary trace lines. I should be able to see a line that comes down in part of this. Oops, wrong layer again. I should be able to see a line. Now, look, I'm going to go back and just press very lightly. I should see a line that's coming down in here. I'm even going to go to like 60. I'm going to get that center line in there, okay? You should have thick and thin inside your drawing. If you don't have it, there's an issue. There's a problem. It's going to be too overly detailed and bold lines. Super Bowl lines will flatten your fish. Some of you showed me your pencil sketches and none of them had thick and thin contour lines on them. So you're already a step down because thick and thin contour is what really grabs along oops, part of that shape and form and really gives us a good feel. So I'm gonna come up here, part of my fish, it's coming down here, it's getting thicker. And then when it gets down here, it's gonna lightly just sort of bend and then fade off. And then there's a little bit of some bumps on the head right here. It's going to come down past the eye. I'm going to see a little bit of that other eye right back in there. When my fish, when I'm looking at my detail, when it comes down here, there's a little bit of a bump that then comes down. And I can feel that lip. I'm looking under that lip shape because the jaw is coming upward. 
and I should be able to feel that thick and thin line. And then as I wrap that line back around, it's gonna tuck in here and it gets pretty nice and dark and pretty rich. And then the lower part of the mouth comes out a little. When that comes out, I can see this interior curve line. I'm gonna do it very light and I can see the outside of that line coming in. You see how that line just defines the, sh the shape of the mouth? If I do all that line in the same consistency, it's not gonna feel right. After that, my fish shape sort of comes down. It's a little thicker here. I'm gonna branch it off and then it gets a little thicker, thinner and wraps around. So look, I have a nice thick and thin line going around part of the body, okay? I noticed some of you guys even doing that on the eyes. That's a huge no-no. I talked about that in the last demo. Some of you guys get into drawing and then you don't look up real quick on the demo. On the eye, I'm gonna try to make the upper part of the line the thinnest and then the bottom part, the thicker part, because that's where the shadow would be along that eye. And then I have an interior little line like this. And yes, his eyes are black, so I'm gonna darken that in. I'm gonna get that on there and look, catching that little interior line makes the eye pop a little bit more. Then the fish has like an outer ring around it. And part of that outer ring, it's very light, it goes around and it's not a perfect circle, it wiggles a little bit, but then there's a thickness to it like this. And then that thickness is gonna fade up and it's gonna dissipate off. And I can come back and thicken that. Look at the thick and thin line sensibility that's in there. It's matching that, okay? Here, I'm gonna put that little highlight on the end, get that eye to pop a little bit more. Okay, now my fish has a weird like double gill system. He has a little bit of a gill system that comes down here. This is an interior line. What are interior lines supposed to be, everybody? Don't be shy. Thick and thin. They're not supposed to be. If I come in here and go like, I hate my mom. No, <laughs> it, it's too thick. It's going to flatten the shape. I notice some of you guys are coming back and your lines are like, they're even... They're like super bold in here. I'm like, no, that's way too bold. That flattens and it's going to kill part of the shape. You have to have a smoothed over contour line that's starting off and then goes thick, fades off, comes into thin, maybe darkens a little bit and tapers off. And if you make a mistake, just erase it, blend it in, come back, thick and thin it. Get that line to work in there a little bit. Then that line sort of comes up and it tapers off this way a little bit. And I notice my fish has a little bit, the eye is sort of a concave shape. So it actually rises above the skin right about here, again, like this. So I'm gonna draw that sort of a bent line there. The eye almost pops off a little bit on my fish like this. So I'm gonna get some of that detail in there. And then I'm gonna come in here and get the other part of the gill. Now, later on, I could shade this and get a little bit of value to show you where that gill is. But the gill actually looks like it, there's a part of the mouth that almost comes together like this. There's actually a couple lines that come off of it. And one of those lines comes off this way and it fades off. And the gill sort of comes up here and it wraps a little bit thicker right in through here. And then it comes up here and it fades off again. And then it comes up here and actually disappears into a shape and almost connects back into there, okay? Now I'm at such a better place because look at the shape and form that I have in my object. Do you see it happening? Do you see it changing now, okay? The only thing I don't have is I like, when I do my sketches, I like having that blue sketchy line underneath, but there's a way I can fix that. So I'm gonna fix that really quick. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna select all my line layer on this layer, there it's selected. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna just go to a solid blue like this. And then I'm gonna go to edit and I'm just gonna tell it to fill all that. So I get rid of the red that's there. It'll uh, make sure it's on foreground color, not content aware there. And I just filled all my line blue now there. So I still retain the sketchy quality of my fish underneath, which is part of the undersketch that holds together your drawing. And um, just to show you, I was in my sketchbook. I'll just 
put this up here. I was doing this yesterday when I was sketching characters with a break. And here's a, a character I was working on. See the same principle? Here, I'll zoom in here and you can see it a little bit better. It's an under sketch of an alligator in blue with markers on top. Okay, nothing's changing. You guys can't see it up there, but there it is in class, okay? So it's the same principle that you're I'm doing with you right now. I use that blue under sketch to guide me with part of my character. In fact, the next page is me. I already did the blue line and now drawing on it with black. And then I'm coming back into it with marker and I'll show you when that page. I know I need to do a demo on that too. Okay. All right. Now let me go in and take a look at pattern. I have some unique patterns on my fish here. Oops. I don't want to go into too much detail. Remember, uh, we want to tend to treat this as a sketch and be sort of loose. I'm doing these thick and thin cleanup lines. Now I want to get out of it. I, I don't like being super tight like this. So now I'm going to speed up a little bit and get a little bit loose in my sketch. So I'm going to go back to my brush. Let's go back to my line layer. So this is how I get a little bit looser. I just come in here and I start just drawing a little bit faster. And I just try to throw some lines in and be a little bit more choppy with my lines, not caring as much. I notice some little contour lines like underneath here, they're sort of coming in and wrapping a little bit in here. There's also, now I'll come in and start to adjust some of the patterns that I see. There's a center line. I'll draw in blue real quick. It's a center line that goes down that part of the face, right? But when I get in here, I'm gonna start to sketch some of that. So, oops, switch back to black. There's a pattern of my fish that's going down this way. Part of that's going to part of the underbelly here. And there's some changes from like small shape to other shapes. So I get that pattern to sort of flow under part of my fish. Even underneath here, there's almost like a larger pattern. There's almost like a series of circles that go around part of this mouth. So I get part of that pattern in there. Another place that I add pattern on my fish is uh, I'm gonna do the pattern on the body, which are these large shapes here. But before I do that, let me grab a little bit more detail coming back here. There's these cool sort of lines that intersect thick and thin lines that are almost like a, a pattern that hold together part of that exterior fin detail. And some of it is literally like little round bumps like this. Some little textures on it. I'm gonna fade that to sort of come in here, let it go a little bit off, fade it, make it get a little bit smaller in the back. Remember, some of this area I don't really care about as much. And the one thing I notice is I have these long, thin lines. I have a long like bone line that comes in here. And then that bone line comes in there, ends about there. So I might lightly sketch in a couple of these light little bone lines. I do notice the lines start to tighten up a little bit. So as I go back a little bit more, I'm going to tighten them up a little. And since I'm going back, I'm going to allow them to get a little thinner. Part of what we're doing is, you know, it's definitely observation connected to shape and form, but it's also figuring out and establishing those little details that make your drawing, your sketch come to life. Okay, now I'm gonna come in here really quick and I have a tough decision with the pattern because if I do the pattern with a line, that could work, but then the line holds the weight of the pattern. Does that make sense? Or I could come in with a marker value right now, like a 20, and then I could put the pattern on top of the fish, let it sit there, and there are two different options. One is a drawing option versus a painting option. If I was painting this, I might come in and I would lose the line completely and just see the pattern which wraps around the fish. So what I'm tempted to do is come back, put another layer underneath here under my line that represents part of my tone layer. I'm gonna switch up here. I'm gonna come grab a little bit more of a warmer value here. So something about like right about there, that gray. And what I like to do, so I don't forget it, is I'm gonna come in right in here and throw part of that pattern down below. Actually, I had a nice color there for my pattern, which is based sort of off black. But that's one of the things I really like about warm markers drawn by hand is that you get a nice warm feel and I'm on warm paper versus here, I gotta get down in that warm section 
bring it over a little bit to get that sort of warm feel for that marker. So I'm going to put that value right about there. I'm going to sketch it in. Now I'm going to come in here very lightly at about, I don't know, about a 20. I'm going to start to sketch part of that pattern that I see on my guy. Part of the pattern comes along the face here. It goes over this line. It wraps there. Part of that pattern comes in there. And then pattern breaks when it sort of hits the gills. There's another pattern that comes in there on the eye. comes down this way a little bit. Okay. Um, there's another little pattern sort of right in there. And around part of those patterns is actually a series of scales, which is pretty cool. We'll do that at the very end. That'll be our detail. There's another pattern that actually goes right down the center line like this. Now, this is where I need to come in here, take my... See how I can see my pattern a little bit on my fish now? When I take off that blue a little bit, I see a little bit of the structure. So I'm starting to see a little bit of that pattern come out. So let me go back to that. And I'm just going to come in here. And I need to think of it as gray. So let me, I have another pattern. That comes off sort of the, the curve off this fish. And it sort of wraps back in here. Then there's a secondary one that sort of comes in here that wraps there. And that wraps around the other side. So it has a really nice symmetrical feel. There's actually a curve in that pattern. And then on this other side, it has that curve there too. And that pattern comes down here, it widens a little bit. And then from here, I have this really nice line that almost travels along the body and comes back sort of like this. And then the rest of these patterns actually connect back into the flow of the symmetry of the fish. They like round, like this guy rounds back in here. And then that part of that, comes in this way and that'll disappear on the other side. So I noticed I when I was doing my line drawing real quick, I'm too busy talking. I need to switch back to black real quick. And I brought my center line not down all the way. It needed to come down onto that line there. So I'm going to fix that. My center line drawing should have been down to about there. And that's where it, it came out. Like this. There. Now I got that in. So now my pattern's matching. Okay. Uh, now I come back over here to my tone. And I'm going to, part of that pattern goes that way. There's a little part of it that comes out to here. And then it sort of curves back in there. That pattern wraps over part of that sh shape of the body, like so. And then I noticed I have, after this, I come back up here. I'm looking at part of my fish. And... It has part of a pattern that comes down here a little bit. It's thicker and thinner, branches off a little bit, comes over here, gets a little bit thicker. Sort of starts over here again. And what it does is it sort of branches off, breaks down and goes across the body like this. But then the top part sort of comes up, gets a little thicker and then drops down to being thinner and then sort of wraps back. Now, I don't want to show the whole entire fish, right? Because what would happen if I do that? It starts to get, what, overly rendered. So I just show a little bit of the patterns that I see, and then the rest will be sort of textures that, that I throw in there. There is another part of that pattern that comes off the gill here, and it starts to go back this way a little bit. And then I notice this actually curves down in this direction, wraps under part of the fish, part of this pattern goes back into here, follows some of that contour. It's almost like it's another development of, a, of a, a body pattern of scales that start to come out. And then above that, there's another little pattern that comes up here and part of that breaks and fades off a little bit and wraps around. Okay, and then back here. Then here it starts to get really small in the patterns it starts to almost go into like this weird sort of diamond shape form. So I'm gonna let some of that fade a little bit. And then when it gets up here a little bit bigger, it starts to lightly connect a little bit more. So. Leave it like so, okay? All right, so I'm gonna leave that part alone. Um, now I'm gonna come in Back to my line layer, I'm going to add a couple more little details in here, and then we're going to go in and start throwing some other values on there, okay?
All right, so I have that pattern that's giving me a good feel. Double check your layer. Make sure you're on the right layer. Let me double check, make sure I'm right. There we go. All right, so now I'm gonna come back in here. I'm back on my black and I'm gonna get some of this little fin detail. This fin sort of comes here, comes down. Thick and thin, it sort of comes out and then it sort of has this like transition a couple of broken lines and then it comes out and does the same thing like it did above. It literally comes out in a line like a bone, comes straight out like that. And then it has another bone it sort of comes out from here. And that bone comes out down along there as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in. Some of these bones are pretty cool, but it's like a branching system, almost like a radius and an ulna. And they sort of come out and splinter. And then what happens, it's sort of hard to see, but you have these little like little webs in here with little lines. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller, get some of those little webs in there. Oops, I went to larger by accident. And to find a couple of those little bones come out a little bit more by darkening one of the edges. So they pop a little bit. That's a really nice detail on my fish is that bone sort of pattern that comes out of there. Okay. All right. Next is I'm looking at my fish. What I notice is he has these little circles and the circles are tend to be smaller and then they tend to be around the little the eye sort of like this, two little patterns, circles. I'm gonna draw them a little bit larger and then the circles tend to come up here and then they break apart and fade. So they tend to be more circles around here. It gets a little bit tighter. Almost like where the crease in the skin is, it has larger circles of detail. And then this the circles really break off as it rounds the form. And then there's a couple larger like little circle shapes up in here that are going along sort of the middle. And then these do the same thing too. They sort of come up a little bit higher and they break a little bit of the pattern that's in there. Okay, my fish's mouth, it looks like there's like little nubby teeth in there and then I really can't see the anything else in the back. It almost looks like it's a series of lines like this. So I'm just gonna draw it as lines. That sort of feel in there. Okay. All right. Um when I looked also those bones sort of felt like they were present down here. Too. That sort of felt like a bone. These felt a little bit like a bone. The one on the end felt like a bone. And the ones in the middle felt more like a webbing. All right. Down here, I can darken that line. I can thin. It's going to be nice and thick, wrapping around part of that. And then I'm going to start some of the line da down here. After this, again, it does the same thing. We sort of have these little, little circles and little webs that hold together, almost like the glue part of the fin. And I'm going to let part of that, again, that sort of fades off a little bit. And then once again, it has this sort of bone structure. These like little bones that hold together the interior of the webbing of the fin. And then I'm going to let some of this fade off. Now, I do notice as it goes back, it does get a lot smaller. But I want to let the detail fade, right? Even though I like to put more in there, I'm just gonna put a couple in there. And then what I'm gonna do is come back in here, put a couple of these little interior lines that go across. All right, there. Throw a little bit of something back in here. Something comes up, I'm gonna just do it really quick.
And then I'm just gonna let all this fade. Another bony thing. Okay. All right, so now that's sort of done. Now I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna start going on top of or underneath this with some different values. Start pulling out a little bit more of the fish. I really prefer doing this more with markers, but if you're doing it digitally, um, I just like to take a pure black and I'm gonna change and go to this guy right here. And then I just adjust the values. Like if I hit it with a 30. So right now my light's coming from up above. So this is where I need to turn all this off and come back to this. Remember this guy here? Where are the dark sides? Where are the light sides? That's a light side. That's a dark side. That front lip is hitting the light. Underneath is shadow. Under here is shadow. This is all shadow. This gets hit by light here, here, and there. This side of the body, it's a squashed uh, sphere. It's going to be shadow. It's going to fade up here. This side's going to be light, which means this side up here is going to be light. This is going to be shadow. So I need to get that in, let some of that detail adhere itself to my sketch and what I have here. So now I'm going to come in here. Um, I created, I thought I created a new layer. Maybe I hit Command Z. All right. I'm going to come in here, just take my brush. Remember, any overspray I get, no worries. I can come back into that later. I'm going to get a little bit of a shadow coming back in here like this. I'm going to make my brush a little bit lighter. I'm going to have shadow that comes under this part of my fish right here. Right? I'm going to have shadow under the mouth. Right? This part here, that fin coming off. I don't care about you. You're just shadow. You're just coming out. This area here is going to get hit by light, but it's going to be shadow and part of this lower part here. Okay? Look at the upper part of my fish now. I have this side here. When I look at my fish, this is a darker value as this runs along here like this. So I'm going to hit that, knock that back a little bit. I even notice the values get a little bit darker. Almost they fade like a marker. As I get closer in here, they're getting lighter. So I'm going to get some of that in there. This side under the eye is darker. Right? Under my the gill itself, the main gill, it gets richer. And gets darker under there. Okay? Under this eye, the inside eye was raised a little bit. That surface drops down a teeny bit more. Okay. Then I have under here, which is sort of a weird, like secondary little shadow under this. And there. And remember, this area is the light area, right? So I'm going to come up here, bring my brush really lightly down to like a zero five. And I'm just going to come along here and put some more shadow going across my fish here. So I can see part of that shadow pop up. Now, the other thing I noticed is I don't, I save highlights for the end. I'm going to come back in. I have some other shadows that are wrapping around my fish texture. So like here in the eye, I have a part of this. Hold on a minute. I'm sure I'm on the right layer. That's why I fill switched colors and I wasn't getting what I wanted. Let me go back to that top color. Hold on. Oh, come on, Photoshop's hanging up on me. That was a mistake when I put that value down there. I did it with that ugly gray. So I wanted to do it with a black at a lower percentage. So here, now I have that black. And it just comes off a little bit differently. It's a little bit richer, and I like that feel. Part of my shadow back on the body here darkens. Can you feel that change of shape and form now in my guy?
Okay, now my focal point's right up here, right? On the front of the head. So what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna darken some of those stripes that are wrapping around here. He has some stripes that bend in a little bit like this and they wrap and they come back up into here. Oops. They wrap over the shape like this. Sorry, I'm getting a lag because of the recorder being on. There's a little bit of shadow between those bones. Okay, I'm going to come back down here, look at part of that pattern again on my fish. It comes this way. I want to get that pattern. It's a little bit darker under the gill. And that pattern bleeds into here. The pattern's going to be darker around the other side of the gill, right? Down in here, my pattern should be richer. I can come in here, get part of that to be richer. It's gonna flow. Part of that's gonna bend down. Under there, it's gonna connect. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that on separate. I'm gonna come back to my blue line and because I hate it being blue, so I'm going to go to you and I'm going to suck out all the saturation of it and take it back down to what would look like a gray line, sort of like a gray sketch underneath it. OK. I'm going to drop that that down a little bit more. Well, why is it on fill? I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to start putting some highlights on, on my fish, letting them pop out a little bit more. And that's really going to change sort of the shape of my fish. Okay, let me adjust this real quick. My line looks good. My values got a little teeny darker than I wanted to. Here, I might come into here and let me go back and adjust this a teeny bit more. Yeah, I wanted those to be a little bit lighter on my guy right there. So I can see a pattern on here. All right, now I'm going to come in here. I'm going to put a high level layer on here. Okay, highs. Now I'm gonna come in with my white. Make sure, I thought it was orange white. I mean, did that so fast. There we go, corner. Now I'm gonna start getting some little highlights and I'll start to pop my fish a little bit more, okay? Um, one of the things I noticed is up here on my fish, I have a really nice little lip highlight on my guy. Right up about here, it gets really nice and bright. And sort of fades off, wraps around the corner like that. Okay. There's another light, little highlight right on that lip end. Wrapping around there like that. I get a little bit of a reflective bounce light coming underneath here. I'm going to pull that off, especially under some of the textures. Okay. I come back up to the top. I have that nice little bright highlight. It's there. I'm gonna wrap some of that highlight around the eye, that top part. Come in, wrap a little bit more here, here. Once you get that shape and form to show a little bit more, then I could come in and start um, working on some of the textures a little bit and adjusting some of those values, okay? Another place that I have a nice little highlight 
sort of on my fish is up here on the forehead. So right in about here, I get this sort of nice little highlight that sort of fades off a little bit. So remember, I have this whole frontal lobe, right? Let me draw it in pure white. See right there? That whole frontal lobe is getting hit with white right now. So one thing I can almost do, which is pretty cool, I can just take my brush and go like this and literally stroke a couple highlights on the top of this head. And then I could come in with my eraser and then I could erase the pattern underneath it. Blend it in where I want it to fit. So I'm going to do that. And since I'm on another layer, I'm going to blend that edge in a little bit more. So, hey, I'm going to come back here, my brush. And I should have, I have a little bit of a highlight coming off that gill. Off the back there, and it sort of comes back down into here. And I have a little bit of a highlight coming off the top up here. right up on this foot right here. A nice little highlight in there. Right. Sort of looks like he just got caught by surprise, doesn't it? Like, oh, dude, I just got caught. Um. I sort of don't like the way those rough patterns turned out, but that's all right. It it we're just this is a quick sketch, right? So there's a part of this where we just want to let it go. Like that, like the rest. I just uh let me shrink them down a little bit for a minute. I want to put a little bit of a block behind them, some tone to make them pop a little bit. Then I might just leave them throw in some other values. So let me do that really quick. The only thing I'm thinking about doing is I don't like this, that other layer. I made a mistake of doing that. That zebra pattern on them. There it goes. That's sort of that zebra pattern. That zebra pattern I didn't like. Here, I'm going to adjust it. What I didn't like about it is it had more of a cool gray in there. And that wasn't what I wanted. So I'm going to drop it down, try to desaturate it. Try to make it a little bit lighter. It's not quite going. I'm going to make it a little bit do this, and then I'm going to come in here. There, that's a little bit more what I wanted. I wanted to pop out in certain little areas, not the others. Okay. Hold on. Let me take all this guy. Converge him. A little big. Hold on, I missed a layer. Is 
I might have changed layer on that other one too. Um, wrong layer. Hold on, I made a mistake here. Just grabbing the wrong line. Oh, that's why I put the line on. I mean, Command Z, I think I merged one layer I shouldn't have merged. Come on, I'm getting a weird lag now. Let's go for the shop. That's weird. All right, it's not letting me do it. So let me just try to, I'll just merge it all like this into one. That's fine. Just wanted to scale them down a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is sort of like what I did before. I'm gonna throw some tone behind them real quick. Um, and then I'm going to just sort of leave them alone and darken some of the down lines underneath them really fast. Let me go back a second here. I want to fix something. I noticed my values on there got really dark. That's what I wanted to adjust. I'm going to take those off. Those are a little bit too rich. Let me fix them real quick. Because I painted the other values on the upper layer. I think that became too strong. There, that's the one I wanted to tweak a little. There, a little bit more like that. There, that looks a little better. Then I could tweak this one. So let me just grab all of these real quick. All these right there. Transform. There we go. Am I going to give them up about there? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, take that other, another layer right here on the bottom. I'm just going to put some values sort of behind them. Actually, white could pop in pretty good. Yeah. Come in here, erase any of that overspray. And what I could do to get my fish anchor down a little bit will be a little bit more thick and thin on the contour line. So if I come up here to the line, now I come back in here, this is where I can get away with a little bit more. Because see how I have that rough value now popping them out a little bit? I could come under here and just sort of, you know, I can darken like the underneath of this fin right here. See and fade that off a little bit. I can darken under his chest right there. Darken that lip a little bit more. Ender right there, darken that area a little bit. Along my Cintiq is bouncing. Okay, there. So you see how he looks now with that little tone in the back? He pops out a little bit. And then if I want, I could still come in here on my line. And I sort of like that when I look really close at the texture. Some of this had like little circles on those dark patterns. So now I could come in here and maybe add some of that little detail in here. Like these not only felt like line, they felt like little squares. Like little circles in there. And that helps part of that feel of part of that pattern. 
but I'm going to break it up. I'll do a little bit here. Almost like if I was doing an environment and I break up the pattern of dirt or rock, they, I don't want them all to be super thick. A little lost and found edges. Need to put a little bit more value around here, that eyelid. Let's see, brush. The one underneath. And down here, there's a little bit of a of value change between here. So I'm gonna sort of come in here with my brush, blend that in a little bit as that change happens. Um, last thing I'm gonna do is there were some little white spots in here, the textures that were sort of blending in. So I'm gonna paint a little bit of those in here, a little bit of a texture coming in there. Me. Texture coming in there. One about there. Some little dark and light values under that lip. A little bit of a shadow. And there's some of that gill. A little bit more. So there it is. I'm going to leave them about right there. So do you see how I didn't put a ton of other highlights on the rest of them? Where are my highlights at? Only the front. I'm leaving them alone. And that little gradient in the back sort of pops them a little bit. That's it. It's it's sort of this buildup process. And I know, like, trust me, part of me wants to get in here and be like, and render all this back here. But it, I, I know if I do that, what am I going to do? I'm going to kill it. I'm going to make it to, it looks nice when it just sort of fades off. And that's the great thing. I'm doing a demo digitally that works better mark with markers. You know what I mean? So... You know, I might come back here, throw a little bit more detail of this dark values coming from the beginning where it starts like this. Let's use the values back there to change. That was super nice. All right, one thing I didn't really do is I didn't put a little shadow under here, under there, holding them together. Okay. I'm gonna enforce that shadow coming off the gill a little bit. And though I did notice there was a little bit of texture coming behind that gill. So I might come in at the very end and just add a little bit more texture in the back there of the gill. Because the gills was sort of neat. He sort of had this like little indents like almost like little circles and it dropped down to like a 50. Almost like that was a little circle there. So there's like a little part that indents there, you know what I mean? And then this sort of comes around, goes under that edge right there. It, your sketch and your drawing needs to be this process. It needs to be developed a little bit at a time. 
and not just go in and render the whole freaking thing. You don't need to do that. And then I noticed where that white texture was, there's just a little bit of like very subtle, like sort of rounded elements around part of the white texture. See if I can incorporate a little bit of that. And then where that skin fold is, there is even more sort of texture coming off of that. All right, that's it. I'm going to leave them alone. One last thing. Come right here. Boom, put a little highlight on that leg. That's it. There he is. Okay. So focus on one area. Don't worry about everything else. Just keep it simple. Let stuff fade a little. Okay. Um, markers is a whole lot easier than working digitally because digitally you, I don't have that limitation of markers in here and it's just, I don't know, it just feels different to me. Maybe because I learned all this working in my sketchbook and just drawing and practicing and didn't really use, you know, uh, digital first. Markers, watercolor is always top for me first to be in there. Okay. Any questions from anybody? I know you guys are all jamming away. All right. I wanted to get that done. I'm going to stop the recorder real quick and then I'll post it up so you guys can look at it later if you need to. Okay. And by the way, one last thing. Some of you guys are bringing me up work. You're showing me your sketches. Let's say 30 to 40 minutes max a sketch, but notice the values. Do the value hopper real quick. I know you're working traditionally, but look at that. Where's that? It's black, right? Where's that? It's white. Where's this? It's a mid gray. Okay, where's that? That's another mid gray. Come back down here, we're 40, 50 grade. See how we have about four to five different values in there? Yeah. We have whites, we have darks. Some of you guys are bringing me drawings and everything you have is in this range right here. You're only at 20s to like 50s and 60s. You got to hit it with a white. And there's a couple ways you can use that Prismacolor white or a gel pencil or a highlight pen. And then you got to really push down on that Prismacolor pencil, really darken and hard edge in there. And that'll make it pop out and feel a little bit better. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys.